I'm Amy from Floating Homes Portland, and I have been living in floating homes for nine years now. My first one was in Seattle, Washington, and it turned out to be a hunk of junk, and I loved it, and I remodeled that. And then I moved here to Portland onto my big floating home, and I loved that house. It was really great for me for that time in my life. Then I sold that and moved on to a tiny floating home. So over the last nine years, I have lived in three floating homes. The floating home I live in now is 550 square feet. It's one bedroom, one bathroom, one story, just the way I like it. When I bought it, the layout was absolutely horrible. I actually think that it was a boathouse at one point in time, just like a little boat garage. And they enclosed it and threw in a bathroom and stuff, but half of the view to the river was taken up by the bathroom. So I redesigned it. But when the contractor opened up the walls, he looked at the framing and just said, Amy, it would be cheaper for me to just build you new walls. So we literally took the house all the way down to the float and started over. <laughs> I do live here full time. This is a live aboard only moorage. Every moorage has their own rules and regulations, but here we own our slips. My slip fee is $350 a month. That pays for water, sewer, garbage, and a little bit into the maintenance fund for the marina. We own it kind of like a condominium or a co-op. Some floating houses are in slip rental marinas. This happens to be a slip ownership marina. So a floating home is quite simple actually. It's a house that floats. They're built on logs and stringers. A stringer is a six by 10 pressure treated wood or steel I-beam. And the way it works is the floating homes, the utilities which are connected, and the docks and all the infrastructure, it all like rides up and down with the river and the river changes every day because of the tide. And it's not a big dramatic change, like you don't feel it, but you see it. You know, I might wake up in the morning and be able to see a little bit more river bank or if the river's higher, then the ramp is less steep. But if you think about it, like here's the whole infrastructure and then there are these pilings that hold the dock in place. Well, the pilings are the only thing connected to the earth and the entire structure raises and lowers with the tide. That's a floating home. This is the mouse house and I'm very proud of my little house. So come take a look. <laughs> of all this nice deck space on the side, this is a recent addition. I love my yellow door. Okay, here she is. So it's 550 square feet. And when a house is that small, vertical volume makes a big difference. I've got a nice comfy couch. This pulls out to a queen size bed. So I love that. Very personal artwork and just Every object has a story, so I won't go into all of those. <laughs> all the cabinetry was custom built by a company here in Portland called Rift Millwork. And so I had architects from Mexico, uh, Mariana y Edgar from Arquilat, they were great. So my architects helped me design this, but everything is very intentional. You know, I've got office stuff in there, a very small pantry up here, a 24 inch oven. I love my oven. Uh, pots and pans. This is, looks like it would also be drawers. It's an 18 inch dishwasher. And here's something that's really cool. This countertop is porcelain. It's this beautiful thin piece of stone. And then this goes here. Voila. I don't have any water in here or I would do this for you, but this goes here and you turn it on and it cooks through the stone. And then when you're done, you can literally touch it again. Um, 
So it's induction cooking that cooks through the stone. Love, love. Oh, and then I have this cool little vented outside just like any other household. I liked this one because uh, it just kind of disappears. Then around this corner here, now we're in the dining room. <laughs> There's a coat closet here, which in the Northwest, that's a really important thing. And I've got an outlet in there to plug in my vacuum, coat hooks right now, no coats because it's nicer weather. I have a 24 inch refrigerator. I've always wanted one of these. <laughs> they're a little bit taller, a little bit narrower, and they're just right. Coming back to the primary bedroom. I love my room. It's so sweet. I, there's so much to say about it, but this little nook, um, I insisted on having, cause on the other side of this is the coat closet and you need a desk. You need a, you need a few walls to anchor things. And this ceiling here, um, is a drop ceiling. So it's a normal ceiling height. It's nice and tall in here. I think it's eight. And then this pulls down and I have huge storage up there and it's carpeted just so easy breezy. All of this back to Rift Millwork, all of this is custom closet. Like I have more closet in this bedroom than most bedrooms. All this drawer space, I don't even need a dresser. It all fits in there. And then remember that yellow front door? Yay! This is my laundry corner. And then as we turn the corner, we've got my Happy bathroom. I love this bathroom. Here again is the yellow. So when I first started designing this, you know, I liked all the things on Pinterest and the cool chevron pattern with the marble and all that. And that gets expensive. So I found this idea actually on Pinterest and I love it. It didn't cost a lot extra and it's, it has a wow. Speaking of wow, look at my floors. This is sheet vinyl. And look up. I know I have the lights on in here, but I never really turned them on. I turned them on to do this video. I found this in an antique store and I painted it. It was like ugly brown plastic. Let's go to the deck. Look at this awesome space out here. It's huge. It's a uh, 29 by 15, I'd say maybe more. Um, yeah, just room for everything. It's very peaceful back here. I used to have a floating house here at the same marina and it faced the front and I ended up really wanting to be on this side of the moorage and in a smaller house. So now here I am in my tiny house. This is sweet pea, my little runabout. The flowers are in bloom. It's a beautiful day. It's always a beautiful day to be on the river. One of the biggest questions I get in regards to floating homes is the maintenance. What's the maintenance like on a floating home? Is it different? It's really not that much different except for maintaining the float that the house is on. So you can imagine that, you know, say you've got this house and it's floating, but you decide to bring in a big giant aquarium or a hot tub or a baby grand and your house then goes <laughs> to one side a little bit. It's easy to level a house with flotation blocks. So one block is a big giant white um, styrofoam cube that's been wrapped in very heavy plastic and the divers maneuver it into place, but one block will display 750 pounds of weight. And it's not expensive, it's like $175 a block. What do I love about living on a floating home? Community, like I love my neighbors. Uh, it's just one big family. You can't help but interact with people. We have lots of get togethers uh, throughout the year. We'll have music up in the garden area. We'll have uh, the annual float, which is next month. That's fun. Um, we have holiday get togethers. I have a community garden box. It's just a community way of living and I can't think of anything better. 
You know, there are a few challenges with living on a floating house. Um, I don't have any storage unit. I don't have a garage. I really don't miss any of that. But, you know, walking down the ramp when you're carrying your cart with your groceries, that's fine. But when it's raining here in Oregon and it's windy and the rain's coming at you sideways, that's like, just get me in the door, man. <laughs> I just want to be warm and dry. So there's that to contend with. And then in the winter, when it's snowy, or when the weather drops below 32 degrees, you have to drip your faucets. But back to the whole thing on community, if somebody's not here or somebody's a part-timer, like I have keys to a bunch of neighbors' houses and they all can get into my house and somebody will drip your faucet for you. So we all look out for each other. are a lot of floating homes in Oregon and people don't realize it. Like we have so many rivers and so many waterways. I'd say there's about 1800 floating homes in Oregon. You'd never know it. And not all floating homes are tiny. So I specialize in selling floating houses. Uh, I have actually written an ebook called A Buyer's Guide to Floating Homes. And I have a YouTube channel, Floating Homes Portland. My website is floatinghomesportland.com but there are any number of types of floating homes from super small houses to big luxurious houses. There's, there's a lid for every pot. Before I bought this tiny floating house and remodeled it, I lived in a really big floating house in the same marina. It lived like a duplex because the first level had its own kitchen and everything and I took in a roommate uh, for two years and that helped offset the cost. But he was older when he moved in with me and he developed cancer and he passed away. And I'm very glad that, that he was a part of my life. After that happened, I decided no more roommates and it was time to hunt for a very small house. And sure enough, this one came available on the backwater. It was part of my five-year plan, so I'm downsizing and minimizing so that I can move to Merida, Mexico, where the cost of living is so much lower than it is here. And after living in my little floaty home that I call the Mouse House for two years now, it's already time for the next step in my plan, which is to sell my little float house that I love so much. And actually, it's for sale now. It's not going to be easy saying goodbye and I've absolutely loved living in this house and especially this marina, but it is time for me to take the next step and move my life to Mexico. And I am very excited about that. The nice thing about living in a marina like this is these folks are my family now and I know that I can always come back and visit. Subscribe to Exploring Alternatives and please share this video if you liked it. You can also follow and find out more about Amy on her website and on her two YouTube channels, Floating Homes Portland and Destination Retirement. We'll also include the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.